Yay! We're outside! The rain is held off. Uh, with our main man, gardening expert, Carson Arthur. Hey, Paul. Hey, buddy, how are you? Good to see you. Well, listen, um, if it was like, you were on like last week, even the week before, we were like locked in like summer. I know. Like total summer mode, like above seasonal temperatures. And then as soon as like fall came on Sunday, it changed. And now everybody's emailing saying, Carson, yeah. what do I do? How okay. do I do this? How do I do this? So this is perfect timing for this segment today. Yeah, so we're not we're not looking farther into those colder We're not saying months. the F word. Okay. <laughs> we're no, not saying the no F word? No frost. Okay, oh, so, okay. No, okay. okay. So yeah. like we're, we can say fall? Yeah, yeah we, yeah, can, we say can say fall. Because we're in fall. Okay, so what, what, what do we want to do in the gardens to get them get them set for those other seasons. So we've got three sets of jobs that people need to be paying attention to this weekend all the way up to Thanksgiving weekend. So the first thing we want to do is we want to start talking about fall bulbs. Now people get really excited, tulips are at the garden center, daffodils, yeah. everybody wants to get planting, but what you plant and how you plant it is really important. So I got some simple tips for everybody to remember right now. Okay. The first thing is go buy your bulbs in September. Do not plant in September. Wait till at least October 15th or later. The cold weather for these bulbs is really important because these are little storage packs. They're like batteries. So if it starts to grow this year, that energy is wasted. It'll come back next year, but your bulb won't have as much energy to put up a big bloom. So wait until the ground is cold because that'll keep your bulbs dormant. The next thing you want to do is you want to put some things like garlic in around with your bulbs. Plant little garlic cloves in around your bulbs because guess who hates garlic? Mm, rabbits? Squirrels. Squirrels. Yeah, squirrels will dig up the, the tulips more than anything else. So if you plant garlic around it, the squirrels hate the smell of garlic. Garlic. Just regular store-bought and garlic. Absolutely. Right. They also hate the smell of this stuff here. This is bone meal. I'm gonna pour this out for you. Huh? This stuff, amazing fertilizer for your bulbs, smells like death. There's no other way to describe it. it. Smells terrible for rabbits and squirrels. Again, they will leave your bulbs alone, but it's fantastic as a fertilizer for these guys. How many do you put? Like, how close can you put them together? Where do you Where do you put them? Yeah. Okay. So planting them is really key. So if you were gonna plant them, I spread them out here. I'd say about two to three inches apart. The depth, though, is the most important thing. You want to be planting two to three times the depth of the size of the bulb. So in this case, this bulb needs to be planted about three inches deep. Now, if you're doing a lot of bulbs like me this year, using a tool like this guy from Craftsman makes a lot of sense because it has the measurements already right there. So you know when you're digging in and planting the hole that you actually are planting it at the exact right depth because you've measured it. It's right here. It's not a guess. It's much better for the bulbs, but more importantly, the height of your flowers will be consistent. They won't be up and down and crazy. They'll be all nice and uniform, which makes the bulbs look even better as a result. Okay, so I have a dead area in our new place yeah. that we moved into. So if I plant some bulbs, but those are only up coming in the spring only for a couple of weeks. So then you're putting something else on top of it. Kinda. So okay. bulbs are fantastic in areas around say under big maple trees because yeah. these will bloom and they will be done before the tree leaves out so they'll have stored all their energy for next year so they'll come back. Unfortunately as you said after that two-week period, yeah, they're you gotta figure out. You got to figure out what's, what else to put there. Exactly. Okay. All right, let's next? talk about fruit trees this year. Okay. Canada and Ontario have put more fruit trees in than ever before, and I love it. But you've got to fertilize your fruit trees. These are fruit tree spikes, and what they do is they actually go down into the ground like this. You hammer them in. That becomes food for the tree itself. But what's nice is these are hard, yeah. so they do not dissolve quickly. So they take a longer, lower, or slower process. As a result, the tree gets more food, but there's going to be some left for them in the spring. But remember, if you've got fruit trees, you definitely need to cut the grass around the bottom of the fruit tree, all right? Okay. Get your string trimmers out, get your lawnmowers, cut it tight, because any fungal infections that impact your fruit trees will actually overwinter in the ground around the base of the tree. And if you've got one like this guy that has a little brace on it, yeah. make sure you're using this, because these strings, as they spin around really fast, can strip the bark. Okay. And if you strip the bark of your fruit tree, it's going to be in a lot of trouble. So make sure you put your guard out. Okay. Uh, okay. Just over a minute. We're right. we talking grass seed. Let's talk grass. I, ju I just did this, Carson. Okay. okay. I think I did, did it pretty good. Did you do it right? Job. I think I did it right because then because <laughs> we didn't have any rain, so then I was watering it. Okay. Right? And we got some grass out of it. Perfect. So that's always exciting. That's it's good. Like, but where are we at right now? Did you use this? I did use that. Okay. Okay. So we're, so we're coming you along. Did it right. we're, we're coming along. But where am I at right now? Because right. the grass is Here's up. Here's the stage. You want to rake really hard thresh it, remove yeah. all of the thatch that's built up. Then you're going to take your grass seed. I like to use a bag about this size, which is five pounds. You're going to mix this grass seed in with this soil. I'm going to set this down here. You mix it in with the soil. You want that seed to soil contact. This is what you're spreading on the yard. Yeah. If you do that, it's going to grow significantly better. You did yours about two weeks ago. Yeah. Watering every day is key. It takes about 21 to 25 days for this to germinate. At that point, we're going to fertilize. 
Don't fertilize. fertilize before then. Uh, okay, so I did, I did fertilize right away. But I also had people on the grass this past weekend. Okay. Okay, but like, is it, it kind of got damaged a little bit. Is it going to be okay? Yeah, it'll be fine. This grass seed, as I said, 21 to 25 days. The early stuff is usually rye, and rye is kind of that quick cover, but all the other blends like Kentucky bluegrass and fescue take a little bit longer. Take a so. little bit longer. But no now's problem. the time to do it rather than waiting for the spring. Do it. This weekend is perfect time. The weather is ideal. Ah, yay. Man, I always look... The, the years go by so quickly because we get you in the spring and we get you in the fall. So I guess we'll see you in the spring. So have a good winter and look forward to our next tips at Carson Arthur uh, for any more tips and CACH.com slash morning live. You can find it all right there.